Okay, so you people might have noticed in the last year or so that YouTube is completely falling to pieces. It is completely falling apart. It has literally ripped itself to bits, to smithereens, to nothing. And many people wonder why this sinking ship of a company is completely getting the silent treatment. See, your people wonder why YouTube is going to crap in a nutshell, and yet you people don't even want to point out the flaws half the time, man. It's sad. Basically, what I'm trying to say in all this is pretty simple. YouTube is a sinking ship. That's why I have a vid.me. That's why I have an MM... That's why I have an AMA feed. You know what AMA is. AMA is short for Ask Me Anything. Yeah, I have, I have an AMA feed now. So I'm going to be doing Ask Me Anythings over there occasionally. I won't do it every day, obviously, because I have too much to do and too little time to deal with it. But it's clear... Just ask anyone that's over the age of, say, 24 or 23, and they'll tell you the exact same thing that I'm telling you now. Life is a pain in the you-know-what, and there's too many things to deal with and too little time to deal with it all. And it's sad. Well, that's not bad, and I'm glad. Hey, hey, I got a question for you. Seriously, I got one. And what would that be? How come most content creators end up having their videos listed as non-advertisable or something? Well, that's easy. See, many of my friends on YouTube are, for whatever reason, the victims of YouTube's broken system and because of this many of the content creators videos often get listed as non-advertiser friendly and their videos are stereotyped under the limited to no advertisement banner and that causes a lot of content creators on YouTube to start Patreons or GoFundMes or Kickstarters or whatever. All in all, I do have to say that that is a big part of the reason why YouTube is going to pieces. Oh, wait, 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 wait. You mean to tell me the content creators are constantly getting screwed over because of videos that they know in their hearts aren't really all that inappropriate at all. So it's basically just all these social justice warriors and these liberals taking matters in their own hands and crying wolf all the time when they see something that nobody else thinks is inappropriate. <laughs> It's, it's funny. Let me tell you people something right now. I'm going to be honest here. There, 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 ain't, there ain't no way that you two is going to recover from this. Because let me tell you right now, when they passed that new privacy policy last September of 2016, I believe that's when the whole world of YouTube started to come crashing down. And now for something you'll really like. I don't get comments on my videos very often, but once I post a video which sees me in some sort of a hyperactive or an animated light, some SJW libtard is going to voice his or her opinion and ask me very simply a question like this. Hey, hey, uh, 
Kevin, you aren't gay, are you? And then I'll respond with something like this. I'm very happy to be alive, but at the same time, I'm not a homo. So, no homo, but I'm very happy. That's pretty much it. I'm going to tell you like it is, though. There are too many people on YouTube who think that being a social justice warrior is the best thing in the world, when they obviously know that it's not. In fact, it is about the worst thing in the world to be. Right up there with being an Illuminati member, an elitist, a communist, a Democrat, a liberal. I think I mentioned liberal once before, but, you know, it is what it is, right? People voice their opinions because they have freedom of speech, but at the same time, freedom of speech, freedom of petition, freedom of the press, freedom of assembly, those are all categorized under one thing which God gave us specifically, and that's very simply freedom of decision. Freedom of decision. Freedom of decision. Freedom of decision, man. Freedom of decision. Use it wisely. Freedom of decision. Use it to the best of your ability. But be prepared for the inevitable consequences of your decision whenever you least expect it. I mean, is that not freedom of decision in a nutshell? I mean, come on. Well, I like to think so, because freedom of decision is what God gave us all to make our own decisions, and God trusts us fully to make the right decisions and follow him in a way that he would best see it fit. Yeah, but look what happened to Adam and Eve 140 some odd thousand years ago when they disobeyed God by stealing from the tree of life. They chose to listen to a serpent on the ground, and you know what happened when God caught them in the act? Let me guess. God banished them from the Garden of Eden, and the endless generations to follow them were cursed with their curse of original sin, which many people believe to be just the original sin, but they don't consider the fact that the original sin is really worshiping a false idol and stealing. That's the original sin. As a matter of fact, worshiping false idols and stealing from a tree of life, and a tree of life could be anything. It doesn't matter what it has to be. It could be anything now. Anything can resemble the tree of life that was shown in the Garden of Eden back in the book of Genesis, book number one of the freaking Holy Bible and whatnot. Okay, we get it. Okay, so let me get this straight. You mean to tell me that all these people are boycotting YouTube because YouTube has gone completely backtrap crazy? Is, is that right? Is that right? You darn right it is. Crikey. I thought it was all just a matter of time, man. Gee, what I wouldn't do for a million dollars just to get laid. Hey, that's not appropriate for this channel. All right, I'll just let that slide. But, you know, um, I'm just going to be honest here, folks. YouTube's going to go bankrupt by the end of this decade. And I'm not assuming this, I'm not presuming this, I'm speculating this. This is a prediction coming straight from my mouth. And it might as well be the most accurate prediction of all, and I wouldn't be surprised if it comes true. And let me tell you people something. If it does come true, you can shoot the messenger all you want, because the messenger is me and I told you so but only if it happens by December 31st, 2019. And that is only two years, three months, and 18 days from now. 
So think about that. So what's going to happen in the next two years, three months, and 18 days? Oh, I don't know. Hillary Clinton's probably going to run for the presidency again. Barack Obama's probably going to be a Democratic candidate to seek a third term, which is basically illegal because the Constitution doesn't allow it. And on top of all that, the country will probably be even more divided now than it's ever been in its history. Well, let me just say right now that it's sorry and it's a shame. It's a darn flippin' shame. Absolutely. That was never a question to start with. Yeah, I believe it. Every bit of it. Yeah, me too. Society has failed yeah! I mean, do you get it now? Political correctness is the one thing that has completely caused the human race to fall apart. And not just on YouTube either, and not just on social media, but in life. Political correctness is the one thing that has caused people all over this world to lose their faith in what's right in the eyes of God. And by this whole world, I really mean about 65 to 70% of the population. I'm guessing that would be around five and a half billion people. Either way, it figures, considering that the whole world that we live in has been tainted by the very species that God made to protect it, humanity which also figures considering that we've corrupted this world and tainted this world through pollution. Now in the last 117 plus years than at any other time in human history combined. And if God's lost his patience with us, then he's definitely lost his patience with YouTube because he can't stand for that stuff no more. You said it, absolutely. You sure did. I wanna know what's really going on in our world today. Well, that's what I've been trying to tell you. But I don't listen. Well, tough spit, deal with it. to another episode of Talking to Myself News. I'm Kevin the Skull Anderson, accompanied by the many voices in my head. And of course, I'm going to be talking about liberals today. Only thing is, I'm not really talking about liberals. I'm talking about all of us. Because we're just as guilty as they are, right? Well, uh, I'm not sure what that has to do with being a liberal or anything, but... Oh, for God's sake, man! Just shut up and let him speak! Yeah, he's right, you know. I think it'd be a good idea, me personally, but... You know, you can just keep talking, he can beat you up like a freaking rag doll or whatnot, but that's your choice, not mine. Man, with that, let's get started on here! So get this, billionaires are dumping American stocks. That's probably because they're rigged, but who cares? I don't care about that. Yeah, but what does that have to do with caring about anything there? It just doesn't make sense. The end is nigh, the end is nigh, freaking run away, the end is nigh, nigh. Run for your lives! So this guy named David Stockton, warning about a Federal Reserve policy, saying that it could play into a severe stock market sell-off. The former Reagan administration director of the Office of Management and Budget isn't stepping away from his thesis that an eight-and-a-half-year-old rally is in serious danger. 
So apparently, according to him, there's a correction every seven to eight years, and it could be anywhere from 40 to 70 percent. And it figures, considering that the last economic crash was, I don't know, nine years ago in 2008. So we're overdue for another one, Uncle Bill. And according to him, there's never been a better time to get in than right now. Wow. And there's one event that is set to create the biggest currency boom our world has ever seen. Already, financial giants like J.P. Morgan, UBS, Ing, and Credit Suisse are going all in. And global brands like BP, Intel, MasterCard, Microsoft, Toyota, and Samsung are betting big. But the Wall Street Journal says the investment could transform wealth for millions. Hey, uh, Hillary? Hillary Clinton? Is that you? Actually, uh, no, I don't, I don't really care about you, per se, Skull, because you're just one in a basket of deplorables, per se. In fact, 25% of all Americans are what I'd like to call a basket of deplorables. But Hillary, you called tens of millions Americans a basket of deplorables. Not I, said the liar. Anyway, the Wall Street Journal says the investment could transform wealth for millions. If that's the case, then the Wall Street Journal is not to be trusted, period. I mean, not that it matters, but nobody gives a darn anyway, so what's the difference? And what difference is there to be made when, in fact, there was never one to start with from the beginning? Oh! Yeah, I just went totally savage level mega Oh, yeah, Mr. Krabs. Ah! Hey, so what about Harvey Weinstein? Oh, he was this guy. Because, you know, uh, Harvey Weinstein, Because he's a sex fiend. I mean, not that it matters, but nobody cares anyway, because no one's gonna want to listen to someone who speaks the truth. Like Trump? Yeah, like him. And I'm just gonna hunt some alligators for my dad and my brother and whatnot. Yeah, but we should keep in mind that we made a person who committed sexual assault president. That is unacceptable. Ah, shut up, Hillary. You make no sense anyway. Ironically, I think that sums up the Democrats in one or two nutshells, depending on how many nutshells it takes to sum them up. Oh! Yes, we did it again, folks. Seventh level Omega Nord up in this mother. With their furry tail and spiky ears. Years. I mean, is that not the cutest little black German shepherd you ever saw in your life? Because I can tell you right now, it sure is. Arnie White, former Democratic presidential nominee Hillary Clinton, discussed the culture of sexual assault following a myriad of new sexual harassment and assault allegations. <laughs> Hollywood film producer and longtime Democratic nominer Harvey Weinstein. And if that's not a WTF moment, I don't know what is. So, Hillary, do me a favor and climb right up that mountain because guess what's coming next? Oh my god, it's Nagel! Hollywood, my car is falling to frame! Everybody run away! Anyway, Clinton's comments come as accusations against Weinstein going back decades continue to surface from major Hollywood actresses including Rose McGowan, Angelina Jolie, or in this case I should say Jolie instead of saying it with a W instead of an L, and Kate Beckinsale. Trump faced major backlash during the presidential campaign when he was heard bragging about groping and kissing women on a leaked Access Hollywood tape with Billy Bush from 2005. No! 
Man, this was over a decade ago. Get over it. Trump won. Live with it. Deal with it. Jesus Christ, here we go again. Playing a woman card as Hillary always has a specialty in doing. And you wonder why people were brainwashed and stupid enough to vote for her in 2016. It's a good thing I wasn't one of them. I voted straight Republican. I voted for every single Republican that was on the ballot, and that's that. Okay, maybe not every Republican. I may have voted for at least an independent or two, maybe a Democrat, but for the most part, I voted straight Republican. Well, sometimes it's better to vote independent than Democrat, especially if you don't have any other option. You know, like a Hobson's choice, you know that? This alternative or none. And that brings me back to a point in my life where I was given a Hobson's choice by my parents. They told me either to get a job or move out. I actually chose both. I don't know, though. No. I mean, I could be wrong. Why didn't you tell me that before? Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's just another blip in the radar. Man, just be honest with us for once. I am being honest with you. My parents told me to get a job or move out, and I chose both. The behavior described by women coming forward cannot be tolerated. Their courage and the support of others is critical in helping to stop this kind of behavior. Clinton said. Yet she's married to a sexual predator. Of course, I'm, call I'm talking about Bill Clinton, but nobody's going to want to listen to me because I'm not God. Then again, nobody wants to listen to God anymore because they want to shove his trust up his keister. Of course, there's another word besides keister that I could have said, but I'm not going to say it for obvious reasons, you know, just to keep it PG. 13. Because 13's your lucky number? Yes. Man, you just trying to get killed, aren't you? No, I'm not trying to get killed. I just like the number 13 because it's played a significant role in my life. Well, I mean, I can't argue with that. He has a good point there. You know, I ain't gonna disagree with that. I think you got a good point. So, kiddies, you want to know why I don't watch Saturday Night Live anymore? I look forward when impersonating Donald Trump. Oddly enough, it was earlier this past week, somewhere between October the 7th and now, in 2017, that Vice President Mike Pence, or as we like to call him, Mock Pence, or Mike Ponce, or whatever, or Mech Pence, or whatever it's called. Let's just call him Men's Pot and be done with it. I mean, it just makes perfect sense either way. Yeah, I YouTube poop reference. But anyway, Pence left the NFL game between the Colts and the San Francisco 49ers after seeing some players take a knee during the national anthem. Trump later requested and tweeted that the vice president did so at his request. Which was the right thing to do. Absolutely. No question about it. So also, not too long after this, Trump rang Prince or Pence up again. Oh my God, I just mentioned the pop icon. Everybody's gonna get triggered! Ah! But anyway, Trump rang Pence up again while he was in line at Starbucks to see if the coffee house was properly representing Christmas. Because you gotta keep Jesus Christ in Christmas. So Trump asks, Do the cops say Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays? I mean, I just want to know here, because I'm, I'm only curious at this point, because I want to make sure that we keep Christ Christmas. Not to mention the fact that we've got to make America great again. Jeez Louise, man. That was a terrible Donald Trump impersonation, Skull. Please, call me Kevin and be done with it. Pence explained to Trump after he asked him that it's still too early in the year for Christmas cups, but Trump didn't care. And he responded in his fashion. Well, you want to know what I think? They should have me as Santa Claus giving all the children coal because coal is the future of this country. Well, it says that pumpkin spice is back. Get out of there, Mike! Okay, 
Your wish is my command, buddy. Come on, let's go. Yeah, that's fine. Let's do that. And later on, Trump called Pence again, this time while the VP was at a random wedding. Pence said that the ceremony was going really well and that the groom looked classy, but then panicked when another groom showed up and quickly fled the wedding. Wedding, I mean. Wedding. My word. And of course, Trump said the truth, as he always does, and he said this. No one should disrespect the sanctity of marriage. Like it says in my favorite Bible verse, Double Corinthians, marriage is between a man and a woman, then another woman, then another woman, and maybe one more if you've got it in you. But keep in mind, this was Alec Baldwin's Trump. Not exactly the real Trump, per se, but, I mean, I've been wrong before, and I could be wrong this time, but... Of course, what's the difference when there's none to be made? Oh my God, everybody's gonna get drunk again, look at me! Oh God, look at me! I'm triggered! I get mad every time I hear someone call me out! Okay, let's let's just go on to the next story, because I don't care about this one anymore. Really, really, I don't. Let's go to the next story. You sure about that? Go to the next story! Okay. No, let's do that. Now, I don't know if you guys keep track of this or not. Maybe you don't want to keep track of this. Maybe you do. But I made a few retweets on Twitter earlier this morning. And they actually speak a pretty good truth. So I'll go over them with you in a nutshell. So a recent penguin tragedy caused the death of all but two out of 40,000 penguins, and it's all our fault. I mean, who would have thought the human would drive the penguin to near extinction like that? I don't know. Maybe we're just ignorant. Maybe we just choose to be. Actually, I think it's the latter. We just choose to be ignorant. We're smart because God gave us the know-how and the common logic to know better, but we choose not to know better, and that's what makes us stupid. That's what makes us stupid. Also, I should point out that Jerry Jones warned players about a negative reaction to anthem protests. So judging based on that article, which I read this morning, I may have to check it again, but basically he lied. He lied to himself, he lied to his players, he lied to his country, And more importantly, he lied to God and everyone else. And you cannot lie to God. I should also point out one of your more recent quotes about America being, quote, a nightmare. What do you think of that? Um, yeah, about that. It speaks for itself. So, people, I want you to take a good look at this. We are not living an American dream. We are living an American nightmare! Everybody, wake up! You're not dreaming anymore. Jimmy Duckberry! And this episode of Talking to Myself News has been brought to you by... How You Will Die, courtesy of tinyurl.com. Also, I'd like to direct your attention to my supposed date of death. December 20th, 2063. Five months and a week after my 70th birthday. Take a good look at this, folks, because that may be when I die. But since we don't know when I'm going to die, and since I don't know when I'm going to die, I just have to play that old proverbial ball as it lies. Because I might die sooner, I might die later. I might die tonight in my sleep. I don't know. It all depends on what God wants for me. Awkward silence. I know, but really don't look at that. Is that not inaccurate or what? That's inaccurate to me. I might not even make it to 50. My father never made it to 40. Ah, the heck with it. It's not going to make a difference, no way. And with that, 
I bid you adieu, and good night, and good luck, and if you don't like my channel, don't even think of seeing it, okay? Also, page rules. If you like what I see, subscribe, get all notifications, like, share, do what you have to do. If you don't like my stuff, then you're wasting your time! And with that, have a nice day. Thank you, God bless, and good night. This is the store here, back with another video. And yours too. Turn to the many voices in my head. Well, that was quite a character showing, wasn't it? Stop oh, listening to this guy. He doesn't know what he's talking about because he don't care. The guy makes no dang sense anyway, man. Hey, hey! Look at those doggo. Isn't it cute? Hi there, look at those doggo. Ain't she cute? Okay, so let's start off with some news. Man, you better not like you were saying news instead of news. Well, that figures since the two words sound a lot alike, so yeah, quite a coincidence, is it not? Yeah, I couldn't do it. You, you go on with your story. Hey, so I, I have some funny news for you today. Some really funny news. Keep on boining and boining and whatnot, because that's all they're good at doing. Yeah, but what if these accusations against Savino aren't true? I mean, the Loud House is his creation. He did make the show. He did legitimately create the show for Nickelodeon, and now they just axed him off of that show. They completely chop him off like he's a perishable piece of redwood. Like a Yeah. Yeah. You know, I hate to say it, I told you so, but guess what? So what? Anyway, back to the point. For some reasons, these sexual harassment claims against Savino, the creator of The Loud House, which still airs on Nickelodeon and will continue to air on Nickelodeon without him present on the show, were more than enough for Nickelodeon to go all libtard and politically correct to say, okay, so, you know, we can't have you because you're a liability to us all because of these claims that are probably not even true, but we're not going to rule out the fact that they're true either, so we're going to have to fire you. And that pretty much sums it up, does it not? Seriously, does it not come up? Yeah, man. And I took my meds this morning. And I'm gonna take my meds every single morning, or else I don't know where I'm gonna live. I came, I saw, I commented on it, I saved it, I liked it, I shared it, and I looked after it. And like Alexander the Great, you conquered, right? I mean, you, you just gonna let these wheels keep on coining and boining for you, right? Well, the only thing that's boining 
the gas grill in my mind that's been burning of creativity and logic and knowledge and wisdom and understanding for practically all my life. Only thing is, the gas grill in my brain is overcooking all of that creativity because I want a bunch of stress good things. Wait, man. Ain't you in here what I think of the Beatles and Five by Nickelodeon on the Golden Show because of possibly fictitious sexual harassment things? Ain't you the one to hear that? Yeah. And you can catch me outside. How about that? <laughs> So here's what I think of the Savino situation in a nutshell. And this is just me being honest. Do me a favor, go back to the drawing board and fix your blueprint. Because your blueprint absolutely sucks. Get down! So wanna hear what you Actually, I've got some more bad news. I'm afraid I've got some bad news. Right. Actually, his real name is Stu Barrett, but for nothing, it was a terrible impersonation. You suck. Yep. You're right. Not gonna argue with that. But anyway, I've got some more of that bad news for you. And if that doesn't sum it up, what does? So, I'm gonna give you the short end of it. Director James Toback has been accused of sexual harassment by at least, to the best of my knowledge, two and a half dozen women. Is Jason Cohen the Hollywood Reporter? Yeah, man. And I will take myself back to the board. Apparently, this is the latest bombshell set by accusations by women who have faced abuse by prominent Hollywood figures. Of course, they're men, I just call them figures, false idols, because that's what they are. Because they're not God, they're just false idols. And you know what the First Amendment says? Thou shalt not bear false witness. No, I mean the First Amendment. What does it say? And what is the first constitutional... No, wait. What does the First Commandment say in the Bible? Thou shalt not worship any other God before me. And that's God talking right there. So the shady new Los Angeles Times reported the claims by the 38 women in a story released early Sunday morning. Toback, who directed the films Black and White and Two Girls and a Guy, and was nominated for an Oscar for writing Warren Beatty's Bugsy, used his status as a director to lure the women into auditions, news, and interviews which quickly would turn into sexual interactions, according to said Los Angeles Times report. The 72-year-old denied the allegations by the women, 31 of the 38 of whom went on the record with their accusations to the Times saying that he had never met any of these women, and if he had, it was for five minutes. He also claimed it was biologically impossible, not impossible, for him to engage in the behavior described, saying that he had diabetes and a heart condition that required medication. Oh, boo -hoo. Oh, boo -hoo. You think billions and billions of dollars, but you want to use illness as a crutch? You know there's a chance that he could be right with his claim, right? Yes, I'm aware of that, and I'm willing to risk being wrong. Oh, we're down the road. Oh, no, you, you ain't going down to get a, a copyright strike for going off the grid here and completely stealing me. You ain't going to do that. Yeah, but I can only infringe upon copyright if I don't use a Creative Commons license. If I use a Creative Commons license, I'll be fine. Yeah, but what are the... YouTube police. You know, um, what, what's the word I'm looking for here? What's the word? Leap on you like a pack of woods? No, a boy!
What's the war you're looking for? Bam. I mean, that's the war, right? Yeah, that's the war. They're going to bang you. If they find out you use them for their college license or standard license or whatever, you need, you're probably breaking the terms of service now. Yeah. Who cares? You two just see this ship anyway, it's bound to self-destruct at any moment. It's like the Titanic. The captain thought that not even God would think it, but on the main voyage, its own voyage, an iceberg sank. And that has repeated itself throughout the last 105 years for reasons I'm not going to explain, because you know. So, come back to the most first notable film, the pickup artist, who started Robert Downey Jr., would eventually write and direct the Q Ball film, which also starred Downey Jr. The private house of a modern woman starred Jenna Miller, premiered at the Venice Film Festival on September. Man, I'd like to just go out there and buy you and just hunt some alligators, because this New York life ain't really much, much of anything. If anything, it's the spit. Don't you mean splits? Splits are two completely similar things. But yeah, I'm not gonna argue with you when you say they're two different things. So one of these accusers. <laughs> and then when he tried to rub his, you know what? The dogs are going crazy. You talking about it, man? I got it. Three minutes later. Oh my God! You just now heard about this, Mr. Styles? And I'm not talking about AJ either. Yeah, I, I just heard about it. And it's actually real reminiscent of how I got fired from Shikara for basically pointing out an accusation about an interview with... Donald Trump by Billy Bush from all those years ago about he'd like to grab them by the... Yeah, we know, Joey. Don't even worry about it. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm Joey Styles filling in for Tam on ACW, and I'll see you later. And one more thing. Oh, my! Tell these people online what you think of Harvey Weinstein winning a week-long treatment. Do you want me to do that? Yeah, just go ahead and tell them. Be your own self and tell. I mean, you know, be known. Uh, all right. The end of the night, the end of the night, freaking with the way, the end of the night, uh, that's not what I meant, you moron. Oh, so you just want me to be myself. Be normal, right? Yeah. Wait a minute. I just got some breaking news. Apparently... Weinstein completed a week-long treatment, and he liked it so much that he decided to stay for another month. Wow! What do you know? Oh, wait. I can't say that, because that's copyrighted by the Disney company. Dang, man. You just trying to get your YouTube channel terminated. Oh, shit. I mean, you just trying to get that channel of y'all's terminated. No, I'm just being comedic and trying to provide comedic for me. What in the world are you talking about? So apparently, there's a psychologist of his at the program that explained initially for the week that he was there that this program is an intensive therapy on an outpatient basis, adding that it focuses on dealing with his anger, his attitude towards other people, boundary work, and the beginnings on empathetic work. What they won't tell you is that TMZ got a conclusion on the report. You know, the company that's headed by Harvey Levin of People's Court Frames. I'm using a creative license for this, so, yeah. All copyrighted property that isn't mine go to their respective owners, just so you know. Yeah, you know you didn't have to mention all that, right? Yeah, but I also know that people don't want to believe the truth, so I have to keep pounding it in them for them to understand. And I'm talking from a verbal standpoint and no other point whatsoever. Just a verbal standpoint. All right, all right, all right, all right. Come here, you. Yes, chef? Are you okay? Yes, chef, I am. 
Then why don't you stop acting like it then? I just came here to get my own shit. You came to do your own? More like you came to give your call and then some. Are you trying to take the hearing out of me? Because what now? It stands a lot like it. I like to think that, but I'm not so sure about assuming that though. Hi, do me a favor. Tell you the door. Yes, sir. So the psychologist added that this Oscar wing producer is able to focus on his therapy despite countless distractions. Like a bunch of meow men. Get it straight! He's not wrong. You know it. Yeah, I know. Let's go out to the army! Let's go out to the army! Let's go out to the army! And get to the dark night in the wall! You're not gonna believe this! Apparently, a meteor... We just call it an asteroid. But a meteor is going to come closer to our planet than any other meteor or asteroid that came before it on Friday the 13th in 2029. What? You kidding me? What? Oh my God! No! Please, God, no! 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 But for some reason, scientists have now speculated that for whatever strange reason, it's not going to come as close as previously. Oh my god, not this again. you got to be freaking kidding me. Get this, get this, you're not going to believe this. NBC News, otherwise known as the necrophilia bureaucracy of communism. Of course, that's not what it is. It's actually the National Broadcasting Company. But it might as well be the necrophilia bureaucracy of communism because they're just as liberal as ever. Bitching! That was a joke. But for some reason, the Democrats, for whatever reason, have decided not to be a bunch of spoiled liberals this time. Really? How do you figure? I mean, seriously, how do you figure, man? Yeah, what's the logic behind that? See, that's funny, because I want to know, too. Yeah, same here. I mean, there's just no question about it, you know? Really, there's no question. Oi, you you just tell me about what's going on here. I really couldn't care less about it, to be honest. But never mind. So it's all good. Oh, and top of the morning to you. Anyway, enough about that. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer said Sunday morning on NBC's Meet the Press that all 48 Democrats on board with the health care deal negotiated by Senators Lamar Alexander of Tennessee and Patty Murray of Washington State. If Majority Leader Mitch McConnell of Kentucky puts the bill on the floor, it would pass overwhelmingly, according to Schumer. After numerous attempts at repealing and replacing the Unaffordable Care Act failed to pass Congress, the two leaders of the Senate's Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions Committee Senator Alexander and Senator Murray started creating outline for legislation that is aimed at stabilizing the health insurance markets. Um, no it's not. That is a big pile of shit. Don't let your kids watch it. Jurassic Park and Lazy Town reference, respectively. As I've stated before, all unoriginal content goes straight to the original owners. He was also asked repeatedly whether Democrats are willing to negotiate further on health care, but being the straight up satanic liberal that he is, he did not choose to give a straight answer. In fact, he chose to beat around the bush. He didn't want to beat around the bush, he just chose to. Well, what do you know? <laughs> Buddy, you sound like Donald Trump trying to sing death metal. <laughs> Donald Trump. That's a good one. His name is Donald Duck, by the way, and he has PTSD. Really, really bad. Look it up! But actually, in all seriousness, what was subsequent to this was President Donald Trump sending a series of mixed messages on the deal last week saying that he opposed it as a bailout to insurance company, but also calling it a good start in the larger effort to repeal and 
replace Obamacare. And by repeal, I mean repeal. Wait a minute. Isn't that the same guy who came up with the coffee thing? Man? It's called coffee. Look up my moment on Twitter regarding my definition of the word coffee. Yeah, but all seriousness, though, Donald Trump's a good guy. He's a really good guy. He's the best president that we have had in this country since Ronald Reagan. Probably the best we've had since Eisenhower. And I know this because I voted for him in 2016 because I knew in my heart that he was light years ahead of Clinton, Hillary, in terms of having a plan. Whereas Clinton had no plan. He never had a plan to start with. Which is exactly why he voted for her. Thank you. But seriously, Hillary Clinton, how many moments do you get? Yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that. So, Tom Hanks says, You mean the man from Satan? As opposed to the man from Uncle? Is Satan inaccurate for something? And by accurate, I mean acronym. Yeah. Is the Satanist anarchy of true anarcho necrophilia? I mean, it might as well be, then I'm just going back to Louisiana to go back on Biden. And I'm smiling Honestly, I liked Louisiana before Katrina hit, but then I had to move with him and my sister to the New York State because it was much more livable. It looks like a desert. But Tom Hanks says, if you're concerned, read history. And he's not wrong for thinking that, because there's actually a way to read history. And it's not in the so-called historical textbooks either. It's on YouTube, it's on Facebook, it's on Google, it's on Bing, it's on Wikipedia, it's on television, it's in the newspaper, it's on the radio. So that's eight places right there that you can look at to read history that's not going to be mentioned on a textbook of any kind regarding said history. Ah! Yo! Hello, Chuck Barris. No, wait, you died a few months ago, so, um... Yeah, I guess I'm calling you from the grave, aren't I? It's Gene, Gene, the dance machine. Eugene Patton's dance music. Ironically, that's also the theme for the gong show. What? I didn't know that. What do you do now? And that's going to do it for today. So from all of us at Skull Media Films, I'm Kevin the Skull Anderson, and I will see you on the next go-round. So until then, don't subscribe if you don't like my stuff. Don't like if you're easily offended by it. And don't share if it's too squeamish for you to handle it. Unless, of course, you're like me and you like to think like God and you think from a godly perspective and not a godlike perspective, then of course you can like and share and comment and subscribe all you want. But that's not up to me to decide what you should do because that choice is yours and yours alone. And you're the only one that can make that choice, not me. And that's it for this countdown. Have a good
inside my mind, and this is talking to myself news. Get ready for the randomness. Let's take a look into the life of the world's richest man. Jeff Soros. Actually, no, that I read it. Jeff Bezos, who made six and a half billion dollars in one day, wakes up without an alarm and washes dishes after dinner. So basically, he's no different than you and I, right? Wrong! And I'll tell you why you're wrong. Okay, go ahead. Tell me why you're wrong. Seriously, go ahead and tell me. He took a shortcut to success. And I'll tell you why. The first thing he eats every morning is a healthy breakfast with his wife, Mackenzie Diesel, a novelist. And he also gets some of her put. Well, I can't say that, you guy. What's new, pussy cat? That's a Tom Jones reference from way back when. And I can't even tell you why, but can I? Excuse me for a minute while I take my meds. To schedule time with Mackenzie and their four children, he never schedules early morning meals. Uh, hey, you wanna try to explain that to me? Cause that doesn't make any sense at all. Shockingly, he's not famously big on meetings in general. And he said to meet with Amazon investors for only six hours a year. And he likes to get some you-know-what from Mackenzie. He also has a taste for unusual dishes. When I look at the menu, you're the thing I didn't understand. The thing I've never had. He said, I must have the breakfast octopus. Or in this case, the octopus. He also likes <laughs> He also thinks that washing dishes after dinner is the sexiest thing he does. Well, I'm surprised it isn't getting it on with his wife. I mean, what man wouldn't love to get it on with their wife? Good lord. I mean, seriously. You got so, three more actresses accuse Harvey Weinstein of raping them. Nobody cares. Let's just move on already. I mean, it's not going to make a difference at this. Shut up and let the man talk, you fool. Uh, yeah, that's that's fine. I'll let him talk. Go ahead, Kevin. Please call me Skull. I mean, seriously, you gotta be kidding. So Annabella Ciara claims Harvey Weinstein raped her as Daryl Hannah would call scary incidents in a new expose. Or I guess we should call it a sexpose. It kind of makes sense, yeah, now does it? Going on out there to buy you hunting alligators for a living. Hey, uh, Kev, can I tell you something? Yeah, go, go ahead and tell me. We ain't in Louisiana no more! We in New York now! Right, well, I have dementia and I'm in the early stages of it, so there. Well, you do have a good point, so I'm just gonna leave it at that. So she recalls about this one specific night in the 90s where the Oscar-winning producer allegedly barged into her apartment after dropping off. She also recalled about how he walked in it like it was his apartment, like he owned the place and starting unbuttoning his shirt. So it was very clear where he thought this was going to go, according to her. He shoved me under the bed and he got on top of me. Then he attempted to perform all sex on me in a struggle, but I had very little strength by then. And that's why I want to die! Okay, I just edited that last part. Or added it, rather. You might as well say that. Of course, a spokesperson for this New York-based, or actually, no. Let's just say Hollywood-based movie mogul said that any allegations of non-consexual S-word are unequivocally 
Denied by Mr. Weinstein. Mr. Weinstein has further confirmed that there are never any acts of retaliation against any women for refusing his advances. Well, we all know that's a lie, don't we? Yeah! Whoa, whoa, whoa! You got it! That's a Zack Ryder reference, isn't it? Except you replaced the word no with dot. Man, you gonna get got if you ain't careful. Ah, heck, man. Let's just move on to the next friggin' story and be done with it. Yeah, I think it's so much easier that way now that I think about it. Well, he's just... Now, here is a real liberal. This, this guy, um, what's his name? This megadomer named Tom Stein. Spending millions and millions and millions of dollars to impeach Donald Trump. Okay, so we had a serial rapist as a president. We had a mass murder of Native Americans for a president. We had a traitor for a president. We had a few Illuminati Freemason members as a president, so... Why did we need Obama in the first place, or Clinton? And I'm not talking about the man, I'm talking about his wife. So, Donald J. Trump, at Real Donald Trump, says, Wacky and totally unhinged Tom Steyer, who has been fighting me and my Make America Great Again agenda from the beginning, never wins elections. He never does. He never does. And you can tell him to go. No, we're, no, we're not going there, sorry. You thought I was going to say that you know what, didn't I? I'm not even going to go there, man. So the 60-year-old liberal running for office in California made a name for himself in hedge funds, an environmental crusader, retiring from the financial world in 2012 and in the last two election cycles he poured more than 165 million dollars of his own personal fortune into supporting illuminati reptilian antichrists like hillary clinton barack obama you know people like that i mean do you get where i'm going with this I mean, does it matter at this point? Because cause it shouldn't even matter. I mean, really, it shouldn't even matter. And here's what I say to Obama and Clinton. How many moments do you two pick? Ms. Reference. Oh, you mean Mike Mizanin from WWE? Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. Oh, shocker. There's also a contest for Senator Diane Feinstein. 2018. So next year, basically. Steiner says that he hasn't ruled out jumping into either race as he criticizes the tax Trump has taken on health care, taxes, or image. Sorry. Immigration. Hey, there you go, man. See, you know what you're talking about. You just got busted up with it, didn't you? Yeah. I did. Okay, so there is an undocumented adolescent 10 year old in federal custody. What in the world is that about? Um, right. I'm gonna save that for another episode. No, talk about it now. I'm just curious now. I really want to know why that kid is in federal custody. Is it because he's an illegal immigrant as the title claims? Yeah, but that's according to CNN. The corporate net Ophelia network. Actually, it's more like, uh, Clinton Necrophilia Network. Clinton Necrophilia Nuisance. How about Clinton Necrophilia Necromancy? None of that made no sense whatsoever, and you know it. Right. I, I'm just gonna keep my mouth shut then. Now, let's take a look at some t- I mean, kitty! So 
I'm glad to have you guys as pitch. You know that? You guys help me relieve stress in ways that nobody else can understand. You make my day better, too. And don't you folks get any ideas either.
price for a greeting card at the store when you can get e-cards online for free. Pen and paper are cheap. And you probably have already both in case, in case you need to send good wishes. So, at the very least, buy them at flea markets or discount drug stores and department stores that sell box sets. You'll wind up paying about 30 cents a card. Don't need a box of 10 or 12? Then buy the dollar store. They're two for a buck. And who in the world needs ringtones? Your phone has a ringtone already, probably more than one. Use it! Use it or lose it, tool bag. You can trigger all you want. I don't care anymore. Okay, so who needs jewelry cleaner when you got vinegar and you can try that to make something white like, I don't know, a multi-cup coffee maker? You know, um, a regular coffee maker, you know, things like that. So don't waste your money on a special curing cleaner! It's common sense! You wanna hear the funniest joke in the world? Really? What would that be? Instant microwave rice. Dang, bro! That's the lamest joke I ever heard in my whole life! Well, it's the only joke I could come up with, so freaking deal with it. So why buy instant microwavable rice for five dollars when, I mean seriously though, why even buy that stuff when you can find a warehouse club version or a dollar store version for a dollar a pound or less? Maybe a lot less. I mean, I don't know. And, and, and who cares about free wash? Watch out for them next time you're in the produce section of the supermarket. Check their costs against that week's price for baking tomatoes or sweet potatoes. Hint, hint. They cost a lot more. A great deal more. So much more, in fact, you'd want to claw your eyes out and pull an Oedipus Rex. What's an Oedipus Rex? I forgot, man. Ripping out the sockets out of your eyes. That's an Oedipus Rex. Oh, well... I think my ancestor was Oedipus Rex, but see, that's the stuff of folklore, isn't it? Yeah, like Sophocles. It's Sophocles, man. Get it straight. But seriously, though, go to Google and type 43 things you should never buy, and you'd probably get something like the article that I'm reading now from MSN from Money Talks News. According to Blue Corner, the grandson of an infamous mob boss won his mixed martial arts debut. His name is... Well, his grandfather's name was John J. Grotti. And Gotti III picked up a first-round TKO victory over fellow welterweight Johnny Adams. It was part of the preliminary... of the preliminary card and didn't air on the Access TV live broadcast, but a video has emerged through Twitter. So apparently his name is John Gotti the Thoi. Um, yeah. But they misspelled his grandfather's name, especially his last name. The other two feisty middle names they got right, but the last name, Roddy? You mean Gotti. As opposed to Gucci. Nobody cares about Gucci, you doing fool! Seriously, nobody cares about that! Nobody! Alright, I'll take your word for it. Okay, so Medical Daily says that the Parkinson's gene kills off the brain cells that it's supposed to protect. What? On a way to go, huh? What? Oh! Ah! Oh! I mean, seriously, now let us episode of Talking to Myself News, courtesy of the king of Twitter roasting, Gordon Ramsay. Let's get started, shall we? So, at Jordan Laughs, notice the underscore in between the two words, asks Gordon Ramsay, What do you think of this rainbow bagel, Gordon Ramsay? Is that a dog chew, Jordan? Seriously, it looks like a dog chew, that. Put it in the bin. 
Christ almighty, you've given up. Meanwhile, at Hans Alexis A tweets, Gordon Ramsay. George my Valentine's Day game. Vegetarian Shiracha Taco I made, please. This is why I'm not a vegetarian. It looks worse than Antonia's crap from I I can't even. And finally we have William at Ramdom01. He tweets. Gordon Ramsay, how does my dinner tonight look? Still getting the timing down for cooking steak in the broiler. Here's how Gordon Ramsay responds. When your plate is more attractive than your food, gotta stop blaming the broiler. So, so just do me a favor. Get out. Get out! The day we use a broiler is the day we all die. And as an added bonus, here's something from at Alex underscore heat. Let's read what he has to say. Gordon Ramsay, what do you think? Three stars? Here's what Gordon had to say about it. You've got a great future in my industry. As a customer, I'm telling you, the guy is savage. He calls it as he sees it. And he's pretty much always right for the most part. And that, ladies and germs, concludes this episode of Talking to Myself News which has been brought to you by Jesus Christ, because he is our Lord and Savior, and he's going to come back when God wants him to. And as for me, I'm going to go back to doing what I normally do. So until next time, I'll see you in cyberspace. Goodbye. Well, it's snowing. You knew this was coming, didn't you? We all knew that this was coming. All of us did. You know, people, when Sony Pictures Animation decided they were going to scrap Gindy Tartakovsky's Popeye remake for the Emoji Movie, everyone lost their minds! How about now? I'll take, uh, boof for 200, Alex. Uh... All right. A group of pill pushers? This is where the fortune, Joe! But yeah, you pretty much get where I'm going with this, don't you? The reason why Hollywood sucks is because of you people. Because you people buy into this crap! This sports entertainment circus! All right, Trish Stratus. I want you to bark for me like a dog, or you're fired! Eric Bischoff? You're fired! Take out the trash! You're fired. You're fired! I'm telling you, if I were the head at Sony Pictures Animation and I found that something like this happened on my watch, 
I would fire anyone and anyone and everyone and any everyone and every any everyone and so on and so on and so forth and so on, etc. and so on, that thought that the emoji idea was ever going to be a good idea in the first place because we all know that it wasn't, was it? No! It was a terrible idea! It sucked! So keep watching CNN 24 hours a day and call this number... Yeah, dumb son of a sauce. You don't watch CNN 24 hours a day. CNN is fake news. It's fake. It's absolutely fake. There's just no way around that. You can't say it any other way. It's fake. It's fake. CNN is fake news. And you can tell those people at CNN to go forget everything else, right? Right. 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 We're off to see the Pedos, the Hollywood Pedos of Oz. In California, you can see the Cosby's and Bubbles and Cox. In Hollywood, there is a bunch of them where you can find, where you can find, because, 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 because there are a bunch of molesters there. We're off to see the Pedos. The So Obama's cohorts in his former administration are trying to undermine Donald Trump's impersonation. Or actually, no, his administration, not his impersonation. Why did I say that for? I meant to say administration. But you get where I'm coming from, right? Basically, what I'm trying to say is Obama and his Democratic scumbags are trying to undermine Trump and his administration. Um, is it because he's black? No! There's no race card involved here! Okay, sir. You're going to have to calm down. No! But, sir? No! Okay, sir? No! Can I just get you the blood bank? They can fill up my largemouth bass. Terry Funk the Philippines! They can fill up my Charlie Hoss. Hot diggity! We're gonna have a swinging town in the town tonight! Hey! Okay, can somebody please explain to me what's going on? Yeah, I wanna know too! You'll get that chance. I don't even care. I like this where this is going, you know? I really do. I like where this is going. Yeah, keep going, buddy. You want him to keep going? Yeah! Honestly, I think he should just take his ball and go home, because he's already scored the winning basket and then some. Ah, screw that! Let him do what he does best and commentate on the freaking news, because that's what he's good at! Skulls New Entertainment will do whatever the godly I want, because nobody can stop me, and nobody can kill me, and nobody can do a thing to me! So, you did lie about- I didn't lie! So, Steven Hillenburg is apparently suffering from ALS. Really? Why is that? Yeah, I want to know, too. I don't know, man. I don't care. Maybe we should know. Yeah, that's a great idea! Basically, the diagnosis came shortly after he returned to service executive producer on his flagship show spongebob squarepants the longest running and most overrated show in nickelodeon history and for some reason um his diagnosis came after he returned and he announced it publicly to the world that he had als hence all these ice bucket challenges that have been going on in the months and years prior and he decided that he was going to stay on the show as long as he was able to. As long as it was physically possible for him to. And I don't blame the guy. I think he's doing the right thing here. Good work, Mr. Hillenberg! You got a special place in heaven coming for you, buddy! Yep, I totally just want Rit! <laughs>
Don't buy an animated movie from Sony. Let's take a look at this phrase. Some people say, I can. A better Kool Aid commercial! It's Seriously, do I look fat in this? Cause I totally don't if you ask me, but that's not about me. What do you think? for themselves, so they vote Democrat. Of course they do. That's what they've always done, hasn't it? Yeah, look at people like Tom Cruise. He's shitting going bricks right now. Literally and figuratively. And you know why? Why? Because he's a dumb fucking nip 
He don't give a dang. Oh, well, that figures a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, man. Got those people out there in the bayou hunting some alligators there, trying to get some motherfucking gator food for supper tonight, because that's all they know to do, because they're poor as hell. You know that? I mean, seriously, though. You know, just, just, just look at it, man. Look at all those people who died. There's something very, very sneaky about them. I mean, isn't there, right? I mean, there, there's something sneaky about them, there, isn't it? You know? I mean, hell. You think about all that sh that's gone down, and you wonder why everything's going to hell in a handbasket, and then you'll know why. Why, man? Because I got high. Because I got high. Because I got stuck. All right, man. I'm, I'm just, I'm just gonna go ahead and stop. Wait, 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 wait. Apparently, some of the people on this live, I mean, list, kill themselves. But you know what I'm saying? Ah, oh, shut up. We already know that shit. Right. We told about that in the beginning of the video, didn't we? Yeah. Then shut up about it. All righty, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, you guys never get tired of my wrestling Jesus impersonation, do you? No! No, no. Absolutely not. You mad I don't. Right. To other people who don't care about this life and not the celebrities, I got one word for you. I just call to say, forget about it, man. Just forget about it. It's just this awful. Don't even worry about it. Where are you? All right. Hey, hey, all of you, come here. I've got something very important to tell all of you. Apparently, there's this guy named Bruce Forsyth, who used to be the host of The Price is Right and play the chords right. And he apparently died earlier this year. What do you think about it? I don't think much of it, man. I think of it as just another human being inviting the dust, so to speak. Yeah, I think it's the same way, too. I don't think it's the same way. Yeah, it's just, it doesn't make a difference anyway. The way you look at it, it's just not much. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. Yeah, I agree with that. Let's just go from there. I'll go fuck. How about no? This, this French rock star who was only known in his own country. <laughs> you, you ain't gonna believe this, man. He was known as the greatest rock star you've never heard of. I mean, ain't that crazy as shit? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I'll say, man. I ain't no doubt about it. Yeah, you can say that again. Hey, I wonder what will happen for dinner. I don't know. Maybe we just have some banquets and shit. I don't know, man. You make what you want with this quite frankly. I don't care no more. You need it, man. Hey, you need it. You never gonna believe it. You never gonna believe it. Oh, my God. Do you have any hatred? Oh. Ew. Oh, that was good. David Cassidy. Yeah, uh, too many people dying young, that's all I can say. Agree with Dad. I told you agree. Yeah, there's no question, man. You know what you're saying. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Absolutely. Hey, how about this, this one person who apparently shot himself? Or jumped out of the story window or something. Yeah, I forgot to mention that guy. He was the other guy that died of dementia. I don't really know what you're talking about. Because that guy, he was born first. That's the way it is. Yeah, man, I, I don't know, bro. What the hell do I know? I'm just another person trying to talk some sense into people and some stuff like that and whatever. And, you know, stuff like that. It ain't gonna do me a damn bit of good just to bring them up and shit, you know? It's crazy. Just so crazy. Yeah, and what about John Hillman? What about him? I don't know, man. It's just another person that tried to just, uh, I don't know, man. Yeah, it's just another guy. Yeah, what about that? Mm. 
I would think that he's very famous and looks a lot like John Selleck. You know? No, wait, he is John Selleck. What if he's just his twin brother in disguise, man? I don't know. What about Karen Dorr? She recently died back in November. Oh, well, that sucks. Yeah, that, that's just... That really, really, really sucks. Too many people dying, too young, it sucks, man. It really, really sucks, except in this case, she actually lived a normal long life. Oh my god. The guy done killed himself by jumping off a building. What? Oh, that's another guy that died too young. Yeah, plane crash. That's how many famous people died. You know, I don't know who died. I mean, I don't care. You know, I uh, it's just too much for me to take in, too much for me to understand, too little time to understand it, and all that jizz and stuff, and you know, piss and semen and crap and stuff. I don't care. No, I really don't care. That's just how I feel about it. I can't care about stuff that I can't control. Common sense. Hello. Are you on the line, Colin Sons? This is God speaking to you! I don't know. It's just, it all depends on how you take it. It all depends on how you look at it. Yeah, it just kind of figures, doesn't it? Yeah, I think it figures a lot. Yeah, how it makes you wonder where it all comes out. Yeah, it comes out right here, too. Ah! Oh, at the face! Next time you better think about what you say, man. Oh! sucks, unless you make it all not less sucky, man. I mean, I don't know. Life is sucky, unless you don't make it sucky. Then it doesn't suck as much. And it figures a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. What about that guy who became famous? What about Chuck Berry? What happened to him? Oh, we'll get to him in a moment. Don't, don't even worry about it. What about that? I don't want to talk about Chuck Berry right now. When his name pops up, we'll let you know. All right. Say, what's been going on here? Oh. This guy done died of prostate cancer. And he was, well, he was almost 90 years old. One month and six days short of being 90. I say that's a good life. Yeah, very good life. Have a nice afterlife, Mr. Grime. You're gonna be much appreciated up there in heaven. Oh, man, poor Downey. Oh, that's a shame. He died so young, too. Why did he die so young? I don't understand, man. People die every day. Most of them die too short. Ah, uh, just, just forget what I said. I don't make no sense anyway. Don't even worry about it. It's all good. It's all good up in this hood. Yes, it is. Absolutely. No question. Hey, you know something? I was thinking about something else, too. Yeah? What was that? I was thinking about jumping off the Niagara Falls down into a waterfall and swimming across the steam. You ain't gonna live to do that, man. There's no way you're gonna survive something like that. There's just no way. There's no way, man! What the hell are you doing trying to jump off a Niagara Falls? I don't know, man. I don't know what she's trying to do. Maybe I thought it was a good idea. Maybe I thought it was gonna be a great idea. No, it ain't gonna be a great idea. It's a shit idea, is what it is. It's very shit. Let me tell you something right now. You think I can? I don't care. Nobody cares. Ain't nobody got time for that. You got that right. Ah. Uh, well, that sucks. This guy that hosted Nevermind the Buzzcocks died from liver cirrhosis. He was only 51. Go figure, man. Everybody dies too young. Because they ain't going to be immortal. They ain't going to be God. What about Ralphie May? Oh! Oh my god. He died of a cardiac arrest at 45. Yeah, he was probably fat. 
Oh man, come on. Don't shame the guy just because he's fat. I wouldn't shame him. In fact, I praise him for what he's done. Well, you can't praise him like you praise God. Oh. Yeah, we saw this one coming. We always saw this one coming. Yeah, that, that thing is big as a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. What about Monty Hall? He lived a pretty good life. Yeah, I would say so. Because he died a long life. Died after a long life, if you say that. Gee, I wonder what's up. Oh. Oh, that's the ultimate boss kill. Uh, I really. Mm, that's too much stuff. But what about her? She the woman and they no ill, huh? She was the world's richest woman. You can say that again. But at least she's in heaven now. Right. You think I give a shit? No. Uh, whoa! I don't know, man. That's just, this is just fucking shit. This is so shit, it's unbelievable. People dying up in this stank ass town. That's what it is, man. It is what it is, isn't it? Yeah. You can say that, right? You can definitely say that. I mean, there, there, there ain't no, there ain't no question about it. Oh man, Frank Vincent, he done died. That sucks. People, I want to ask you guys a funny ass question. You, you know, all these people that die, they, they don't die without a reason, do they? Like, like Troy Jeffrey, for example, he died in a helicopter crash. I mean, a helicopter crash. Why do I call a helicopter crash a helicopter crash? Why I don't know. I mean, I don't know, man. But, but, but this guy, Troy Jeffrey, he was supposed to perform somewhere in Memphis. And then that plane crashed and he died. So that killed off Montgomery Gentry as a group, but not as a band, technically. I mean, oh, God. You gotta be kidding me, right? Walter Becker just passed away? Yeah. Oh, man, that sucks. I wonder what's going on. Oh, Jay Thomas done died too. That's not good, is it? No, man. That sucks. Yeah, it does suck, doesn't it? Right. I mean, yeah. I mean, it just sucks. Right. You definitely don't believe that. Oh, the guy done died. Jerry Lewis. Yeah, that, that guy done died for whatever reason. Just, cause, uh, cause he, uh, he died. I think he done died of natural causes. What the hell do I know? I don't know anything, man. I just, I just done it and I don't know. Oh, see, that's that guy you mentioned. Yeah, I did mention that guy, didn't I? Yes, I did, man. You mean, yes, I did. No, yes, I did. Yes, I did. And don't you dare deny it either. All right, I ain't gonna deny it. I ain't gonna dispute it. Right. You think I'm gonna put up with this shit? No. I know you ain't gonna put up with my shit. I can't put up with your shit either. Yeah, that's the thing, right? Right. Oh, yeah, we, we already know about this man. What about Glenn Campbell? Yeah, he done died. Uh huh. Yeah, just, just what happened to that guy? Alzheimer's. That's what happened to him. Oh, yeah, that, that, that's, uh, that's crazy. Yeah, just doing figures a bit, doesn't it? Yeah, figures. Yeah, figures. Yep, 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 yep. Absolutely. What about Robert Hardy? Oh, he done died too. That ain't good, man. This, this, this isn't good. It, we all go in the hell right there in one hand basket. And, and, and then the, the Sam Shepard died? What the? Oh, that's too bad, man. That's, that's way too bad. Boy. At least the bait's better than a fucking Hombosky there. Mm. What about John Hurd? John didn't use shit. Oh! That, that's a good one! Yeah, it is a good one. Yeah! Oh! Yeah, I think I mentioned this guy before. I did, thank you. Yeah, you did voice, but now I'm mentioning it. Right, man. 
if you see, I know shit, cause I see shit. Yeah. I just, I don't know, man. It's just, it's just, it's too much. Way too much. Oh, the father of modern horror films, he died. George A. Romero, he died of lung cancer and all that stuff, and he just don't die. It don't make sense to me, man. It don't make sense. Say, what the hell is everything come to? I don't even know what everything's come to anymore. No, I used to watch that guy. Nah, you won't lie about when I watched him. Oh, you mean Mission Impossible? Yeah. Yeah. I don't care about that, man. Fuck that. Yeah, you're right. Fuck that. What about this Chinese Nobel Peace Prize man? He may he's the voice to die since 1938. Man, that's that's really shit, isn't it? Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. What about Nelson Ellis? What about Nelson Ellis? He died. Michael Nyquist, or I don't know how to pronounce that guy's name. I don't care, man. That's just... Oh, Stephen Thurston died. Wow, that's not good. That, that, that ain't good. We losing all these comedians. We have all this gone. That freaking Hillary Clinton and freaking Chuck Schumer or Ashley Bucks. You the hell with Pelosi and screw Clinton. Trump is where it's at. Yeah! 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 Going straight. You got that right. And it figures a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, it does figure. It figures a whole heck of a lot there, now doesn't it? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And, oh, man, Adam Lester died! What the hell? That's not good! Oh, no! Well, at least he's in heaven now. Yeah, he's in heaven now. That's a good thing. So it's a We can all drink to Bart. Yes, we can all drink to Bart. Undisputedly. And we can see this guy beggar off right there and, and wherever the hell he's at. Because I don't care about all of it. Because quite frankly, I don't need to care. Because it doesn't require caring at all. Um, why care when you can just look at something like, oh. Uh... David Rockefeller died! Well, at least there's one Rockefeller we don't have to worry about. And that's a good thing, now, isn't it? Yeah. You can say that again. Damn straight. And, and what about, whoa, 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 what about this guy, John Clark? Oh. He done died. That sucks. Yeah, this, this, this sucks. This, this really sucks, man. I, ah, uh, too much shit going on here. Not, not enough time to deal with it. And, oh, oh, my God. Oh, oh heart and McGinnis died of a little heart condition. Oh, my God. Tragedy! Oh, this sucks! Hmm. I wonder what you think about about all this other stuff that's been happening here lately. Right? I don't know, man. There's not much to think about it, I guess. I mean, ah, uh, ooh. Yeah, oh, I saw this coming. Chuck Berry died. Oh! Oh! Tony Sledge done died. Yeah! Oh, that sucks. She was one of my relatives! No, she wasn't. Yes, she was, I can prove it. Her birth certificate says so. Oh. John Surtees, he died too. Oh. Well, that sucks. At least you live a long life. That's good. Oh, what about, oh, Robert Osborne. The voice of TCM, he died. That sucks. Yeah, you can say that again. So keep watching Talking to Myself News, 24 hours a day, and call this number. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Joseph Wapner died this February. That was a few months ago. Yeah, like 10 months ago and such. But that doesn't matter, man. 
That don't matter anymore. He's dead. He's gone. No need to worry about it because he's in the. Oh my god. You know, Braxton died? Alan Cohen's dead? Oh. It's too much. What is this? I don't know what this is anymore. Turn into a complete shit fest is what it's doing. Ah. Uh, yeah. I, I just don't, man. I can't even. I can't even! I can't even! I don't know what to think. What do we think? We can't think about anything. We just have to live. We just need to live. We have to do the best we can in order to survive. Yeah. And it's just... Uh, too much to bear. Too much to go with. Too much to take care of and too little time. It's just... It sucks. It truly, truly sucks. And, 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 you know, you know, I could, I could go on and on and on and on and on and on, and on about this, but, but the point is, people die just because they die. There's no real reason for it. They eventually die and become no more. And that's why they die. And, and now that you know that they, shut up! Alright, we're just gonna move on to something else here, man. Yeah, let's let, let just move on to something else and shit. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, man. You make what you want it. Because that's for me. I don't know anymore. And I couldn't care less about it. I mean, you, you, you do want to be honest, right? You do want to be honest? Yeah, I do want to be honest. No, just can't lie to me, man. Just, just, just freaking lie to me, man. Lie. Lie. I want you to lie to me. Die just because they die. There's no real reason behind it. There's no real motive for it. There's no way to explain it. No way to say it. It just happens. Shit happens. And when shit happens, get out of the way, cause it's gonna hit the fan! Forget it, forget it, forget it. Forget it. Cause nobody can stop me! And nobody can kill me! And nobody can do anything to me! So let's see, where, 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 where did we leave off last? Where, 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 where did we leave off? Oh, I know where we left off. We left off at the intersection of Albuquerque and Dumbest. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't care anymore, man. Uh, too many people dying. Too many reasons to die. It's just all ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's all kinds of ridiculous. You know? It doesn't make sense to me, but you're right. It is all kinds of ridiculous. Is that drunk sexy dango? No! Just, just forget it, man. We all good. Don't, 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 don't even worry about it, man. It, yeah, you're good. Let me explain. What the hell do people sing all lang syne for? I mean, what the hell is this? It don't make no sense. Well, according to Diane Brooke, that's life. All Lang Syne, the song that everyone drunkenly groans to just after the ball drops and the confetti begins to swirl to mark the start of a brand new year, supposedly is derived from a poem written by the great Scottish poet Robert Burns in 1788 set to an old folk tune, which is believed to be an old Scottish way of saying a long time ago. Phrases like in the days of Auld Lang Syne crop up in other Scottish family tales, usually as a way of saying once upon a time. The history of the song itself has a fable-like quality to it, as Robert Burns allegedly sent a copy of the original song to the Scots Musical Museum with the remark, the following song, an old song, is... Wow. I told you not to send that shit! I have shit. no idea what that is. But I don't care. So it's all good. It's, it's, it's really all good. But, yeah. In the days of long times gone, it's all good. No worries. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're just gonna 
We're, we're gonna go ahead and just, just point out the facts and sh- You know, stud like that, right? And who's to say that we don't know where all that anxiety comes from? Maybe it comes from eczema or something. I don't know where it comes from, do you? Yeah, I already know, because I done told you. Right. He already knows, so, so you, you don't need to tell him again. Yeah, that, that's cool, man. That's cool. By the way, by the way, uh, there's this guy named Guy Lombardo who supposedly made the song famous because he did his own arrangement of it back in around, I'd say, 1929, and it was so successful and so popular, even in his home in Canada, that he actually played it every year around this time on New Year's night at about midnight, every year for nearly a half of a century, for nearly five decades until he died in, in, uh, in 1977. Yeah, that's the case, but I mean, who gives a damn anyway? No, of us do, but we couldn't care less, ha! <laughs> yeah, man. They didn't let it just goes to show y'all. You never know what the hell's gonna happen to us. Because if we know what's gonna happen to us, it's just not really gonna make a difference. Because at the end of the day, who cares? Nobody cares. Nobody. Nobody, no way, no how. And it's not gonna make a difference. And it's just so funny, you know? It's just... Mm. It's really just, it's all, I don't know, man, it's, it's crazy, because you think about all this stuff that's been going on, oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, because let's just say that there is, really, in all seriousness, there is a true meaning to this all lang syne. Yeah, I already told you, it's in the days of long times gone, man. Long era's gone, long epics gone. You know, shit like that, right? Right. Right, 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 right. And now we all gonna get to the biggest joke in the history of this country. I'm talking about that Islamist, communist, Muslim, terrorist, Negro, democratic, retardocrat. Obama urges followers to keep changing the world in 2018. Ain't that some shit? Fucking thing that happened in this country. And you know it, and I know it, cause it's a fact. Okay, we just we're just gonna end it right here. Okay? Let let's just let's end this sh right here. How about that, huh? Let's let's just let's just get this over with, right? Right. I mean it's not gonna make no way difference with this going anyway. Yeah, so, what's that? What Barack Obama has been proven yeah, in a Gallup poll to, lose to be the anything. most admirable man lost for the 10th is, consecutive so year. Are shit? you kidding Nobody me? What the shit. fuck That's is this thing? That ain't right. That's bullshit. Shit. Fucking Chinese, Muslim, Negro, retarded crap. What the fuck, man? That don't make no sense. Dang. Fucking Richard Nixon did better than him. There's another season of it. Hillary Clinton would have done better in 2018, she but I'm not going to say which month or which day. I'm going to let nobody you figure that. Damn anyway. So until next time, this is your buddy. This is your scully boy here, signing off for now. And we're going to see you later. Damn straight. Because they're right.
And, and one more thing. One more thing. Oh. Almost forgot. Thanks, you guys. It just... It means so much to me. That, that you guys do this shit for me. So thank you guys a lot. By the thank way, I got one lot. more question for you. Yeah? Why the hell is Obama so popular amongst libtards? Because they don't give a shit what's best for them. They only care about what's worse for everyone else. They only care about one thing, and that's Satan. Dang straight! Later. We hate to say sauce, but ladies and gentlemen, this shit never no! happened. This shit never happened. Not a shit.